Hello and welcome to a new episode of Legal Wrangle on Corporate Laws. Today we have selected three important rulings given by the Supreme Court of India and the Competition Commission of India. Let's begin with the first case. In this case, the issue was whether, for the purpose of enforcing statutory code of conduct against multinational accounting firms, there is a need to set up an expert panel to examine the existing regulatory frameworks and also see whether certain policies of the government are being violated. A PIL was filed before the High Court seeking direction for exercise of power under Section 21 of the Chartered Accountants Act 1949 to initiate investigation against multinational accounting firms and Indian chartered accountancy firms having arrangement with such MAFs in the breach of code of professional conduct and also to take penal action by the way of cancellation of permission granted to them by Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. It was pleaded before the High Court that MAFs were illegally operating in India and providing accounting, auditing, bookkeeping and taxation services. Operations of such entities were alleged to be in violation of Companies Act, the CA Act and the Code of Conduct laid down by ICAI. The stand of the ICAI in the form of status report filed before the High Court was that 161 out of 171 firms were examined by the High Powered Committee in pursuance of report of the expert group dated 29 July 2011 with regard to alleged violations and some of the cases were referred to the Director Discipline for further action. The ICAI had already taken action on its part. The High Court observed that in the view of stand of ICAI, no further action was necessary and disposed of the writ petition. In the petition before the Supreme Court, it was alleged that ICAI was required to take immediate action for deregistration of these firms in terms of their own committee report. The Supreme Court issued direction that Union of India may constitute a committee of experts to look into the question whether to what extent the statutory framework to enforce the letter and spirit of sections 29 and 25 of the CA Act and the statutory code of conduct for the CAs requires revisit so as to appropriately discipline and regulate MAFs. Code of conduct for the CAs prohibits fee sharing advertisements but the MAFs by using international brand and mixing other services with the services to be provided as the part of practice of chartered accountancy violate the said code of conduct for which there was no regulatory regime as the MAFs do not register themselves with ICAI. Indian firms using similar brand names are registered with the ICAI but the real entities being MAFs, ICAI is unable to take requisite action for a violation of code of ethics by the MAFs. Thus, revisit of existing legal framework may become necessary so as to have an oversight mechanism to regulate MAFs on the touchstone of code of ethics. It is an undisputed fact that there are remittances from outside India. The same could be termed as investment even though the remittances are claimed to be interest-free loans to partners. The amount could also be for taking over an Indian chartered accountancy firm. Relationship of partnership firms though having Indian partners operating under a common brand name from the same infrastructure with foreign entity is not ruled out. It is not possible to rule out violation of FDI policies, FEMA regulations and the CA Act. If the premises are same, phone number, fax number is same, brand name is same, the controlling entity is same, human resources are same, it will be difficult to expect that there is full compliance on mere separate registration of a firm. The prohibition under Section 25 of the CA Act can be held to be defeated. In a nutshell, the Apex Court held that the Committee of Experts should examine the need for a separate regulation on the pattern of overseas body to oversee the profession of the auditors. In this case, the issue was whether the provisions of Section 21A of the Banking Regulation Act 1949 would not operate in a state where there is a State Debt Relief Act to grant relief to farmers. 
Let's understand the factual matrix. The PIL was filed under Article 32 of the Constitution of India assailing the constitutional validity of Section 21A of the Banking Regulation Act 1949. Such section was introduced in the Banking Regulation Act by the Banking Laws Amendment Act 1983 with effect from 15 February 1984. Section 21A interdicts the reopening by the codes of debt between a banking company and its debtor on the ground that the rate of interest charged by the banking company in respect of a loan transaction is excessive. The section seeks to keep out of the harm's way the Usurious Loans Act 1918 and any other state legislation related to indebtedness and then declares that no such loan transaction shall reopen by any court on the ground of charging an excessive rate of interest. The red petition was filed by certain public spirited citizen who relies on the report of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Agriculture for the year 2006-2007 to say that Section 21A should be abolished insofar as it applies to rural indebtedness. The Apex Court held that Section 21A of the Banking Regulation Act is valid as it is the part of the enactment which in pith and substance is relatable to Entry 45 List 1 of the 7th Schedule of the Constitution. However, Section 21A will not operate in the states where there is a State Debt Relief Act which deals with the subject matter of relief of agricultural indebtedness. A State Debt Relief Act as the legislation is referable to the special entry Relief of Agricultural Indebtedness under Entry 30 List 2 as opposed to Banking Regulation Act under the General Entry of Banking in Entry 45 List 1. Any incidental encroachment by the parliamentary status on the Entry 30 List 2 with respect to State Debt Relief Act made thereunder would make Section 21 yield to the State Debt Relief Act to the extent that they cover relief of agriculturists from the debt due to the banks. Where Section 21A of the Banking Regulation Act incidentally trenches upon the State Debt Relief Act enacted under Entry 30 List 2 so far as relief of agriculture indebtedness is concerned, where there is state legislation on the same subject matter which directly clashes with Section 21A, Section 21A will have to give away the State Debt Relief Act insofar as relief from agricultural indebtedness due to the bank is concerned. The non obstant clause in Section 21A cannot override the State Debt Relief Act in that situation as Parliament cannot give itself supremacy over the state legislation where none exists under the Constitution. All the other entries of the state list give exclusive power to the states to legislate on the subject matters mentioned therein. This threefold scheme contained within list 2 itself would be violated. If parliamentary legislation were to invade an exclusive sphere of state and were to prevail over the state legislation made within the state's exclusive powers, all the entries of state list 2 would be subjected to entries of list 1, which is not constitutional scheme. In a nutshell, the Apex Court held that Section 21A of the Banking Regulation Act would not operate in a state where there is a State Debt Relief Act to grant relief to the farmers. Now let's move on to our last case which pertains to the Competition Act 2002. The key issue was whether predetermined ranking, prominent display and placement of commercial flight unit with link to Google's specialized search options and prohibitions imposed under the negotiated search intermediation agreements upon the publishers are unfair and amounts to abuse of dominance by Google in India. Let's understand the factual matrix. The information was filed by Matrimony.com Limited, which provides internet as a vehicle or platform for prospective marriage alliances against and by consumer unit 
Trust Society CUTS, which is stated to be a non-profit, non-governmental organization working on public interest issues including those related to consumer protection and competition against Google Inc. and Google India Private Limited, alleging inter-alliance contravention of the provisions of Section 4 of the Act. It was stated by the informant that Google runs its core business of search and advertising in a discriminatory manner, causing harm to advertisers and indirectly to the consumers. It was alleged that Google is creating an uneven playing field by favoring Google's own services and partners through manually manipulating its search results to advantage of its vertical partners. The informant alleged that Google was indulging in the abuse of its dominant position in the market for online search through practices leading to search bias, search manipulation, denial of access to competing search engines, refusal to re license content to competing search engines and create of entry barriers. The Commission, after considering the entire material available on record, directed the Director General to cause an investigation to be made into the matter. The DG, after receiving directions from the Commission, investigated the matter and filed investigation report. The Commission found Google to have abused its dominant position in online general web search and web search advertising services in India. The Commission imposed a penalty of Rs 135.86 crore upon Google after taking into account its revenue from its India operations only. The Commission acknowledged the fact that Google is dominant player in the market and had revolutionized the manner in which users access information on the internet and agrees with the DG that the market strength had been acquired by Google over a period of time. The Commission further held that Google had abused its dominant position on the following three counts. Ranking of universal results prior to 2010, which was not strictly determined by relevance, rather the ranking was predetermined to trigger at the first, fourth or tenth position on SERP. Such practice of Google was unfair to the users and was in contravention of the provisions of Section 4 of the Act. Prominent display and placement of the commercial flight unit with link to Google's specialized search options services amounts to an unfair imposition upon the users of search services as it deprives them of additional choices and thereby such conduct is in contravention of the provisions of the Section 4 of the Act. The prohibitions imposed under the negotiated search intermediation agreements upon the publishers are unfair and they restrict the choice of these partners and prevent them from using such services provided by competing search engines. Imposing of unfair conditions on such publishers by Google amounts to violation of provisions of Section 42A of the Act. Apart from imposing penalty, the Commission issued a desist order and directed Google not to resort to such fixing of position in future. So far as contravention noted by the Commission in respect of flight commercial unit was concerned, the Commission directed Google to display a disclaimer in the commercial flight unit box indicating clearly that the search flight link placed at the bottom leads to Google's flight page and not the result aggregated by any other third party service provider, so that the users were not misled. With this, we wrap up this episode of Legal Wrangle on Corporate Laws. Keep watching TL2 for more such episodes. Please send in your suggestions at editor at the rate tiol.in. Thank you for watching.